truly terrifying ordeal for the residents as they had to clamber up the cliff to safety. But these ruins do have a somewhat dramatic beauty that you can see throughout this wonderful county. Devon sits in the very heart of southwest England, with Cornwall to the west, Somerset and a slice of Dorset to the east. The county is the only one in England to boast two separate coastlines. The Bristol and English channels flow above and below it, with craggy cliffs and sandy shorelines found on both. In 1951, the UK declared Dartmoor its fourth national park. Its 368 square miles are a haven for wildlife and an additional draw for both dedicated and weekend walkers who come to enjoy the park's changing seasonal colours. Agriculture and tourism are the county's staple incomes. Countless herds of dairy cattle provide some of the raw ingredients for delicious Devonshire cream teas, many of which are eagerly consumed by the 5.5 million annual visitors to the county. It won't come as a surprise to learn the average price tag of £286,000 for a detached home here in Devon is above the national figure. That's 30,000 above to be precise. But those official stats, well, they don't reflect the true story. Along the county's southern coastline, well, it's home to some of the most expensive seaside real estate in the whole of the UK, which obviously pushes up that average figure. My advice? Head inland to the market towns like Tavistock or Hattersley, you'll find you'll get more for your money. And that's exactly what today's buyers want to do. For the past 12 years, company director John and teacher Lynn have lived in the town of Bronzegrove in the West Midlands. Their busy careers have led to a work-life imbalance, but with changes on the horizon, they've decided it's time to head off to the countryside for a quieter lifestyle. I've just hit the magic age of 63. Lynn got offered the chance to retire slightly early. We've been planning the move to the country for mm -hmm. 10 years. One of the, the, the principal things we're really looking forward to is spending more time together. Over the last five months since Lynn started winding down, um, and I'm def desperately trying to wind down what I'm doing. Now when I've done 39 years and 122 days, I feel it's time <laughs> for me to have some me time and share some time with my husband. As a teacher, you do have to compromise over time you have together. So this is our time now, and that's what we're going to do. And their choice of Devon is due to a family connection. And one of the things we've always said we would do is go down to where our son is, towards Plymouth. Our son got married in February to a, a lovely girl from Tavistock. We're quite happy to be near him, but not exactly on his doorstep. A spontaneous couple, the move will give them more options for exploring the glorious Devon countryside. I want to get another dog. I just want to get out there. I just want to enjoy it. The idea of just sort of loading a dog into the back of the car, loading a picnic hamper and say, OK, where are we going? Yeah, You've and that's it. That says it, really. We've got the picnic hampers ready. They're hoping this change of pace will have a knock-on effect elsewhere. One of the things that's been neglected over the last five or six years is, is, is my gardening. I tend to be uh, in the assistant gardener role. I get told what to do and where to go and what, and what to lift and move. But my passion is growing plants. and I've never had the time over the last few years to go and do it. And their list of requirements for the new home is very short. We don't really want an attached house. Um, apart from that, we're, we're, open we're pretty open-minded. I like gardening, but I want to do it on a compact style. I don't want two acres or five acres of ground that we can mess around in. Uh, but what we want to do is just go down and explore and be close to our family. So how much are they putting into their Devon move? The budget for the move is 350 to 400,000 pounds. But we've packed up ready to go. We just need somebody to come buy the house. <laughs> Small detail. I can't wait, I just want to go. <laughs> John and Lynn have asked us to focus our search in the west of the county to be within reasonable distance from their son in Plymouth. I met up with them in Devon to find out more about their proposed relocation. Well, John and Lynn, 
Welcome to Devon. Are you looking forward to the next few days? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So what are we looking for in this next house? Because you have given us well, quite a blank canvas, which yes, is unusual. Mm -hmm. So very flexible, are you? As long as it's airy. <laughs> airy. OK, yes. got to be airy. What else? Big bedrooms. How uh, many bedrooms, ideally? Three minimum. Yeah. There's only the two of us. Plus, we're we obviously, have visitors. obviously going to get inundated with people once we move down here. Um, apart from that, we bought our last house in four minutes, so... I can feel the pressure. No, not at all. <laughs> if it feels right, it will be right. But that's good. If you know your minds, that's good. It's the atmosphere when you approach and walk into the building. What about a project? Interested in a project? No, thank Look, you. I think those faces said it all, didn't it? No, thank you, Nicky. No projects. We just want a lovely house we can move into. We're hoping to be busy doing things outside the house, not necessarily a project with the house. Who needs painting? Fine, that's okay. Yeah, we okay, can organise but... that. <laughs> yeah. Purely cosmetic. Yes. Great. Well, we have got the three, <laughs> one of which is our mystery house. So, should we get started? Yes, we do. Armed with a top budget of £400,000, John and Lynn are looking for a bright and airy detached property with a minimum of three bedrooms, a manageable garden for John's plant growing aspirations, reasonable distance from their son in Plymouth, and with glorious views of the West Devon countryside. Our three properties are very different and will give them a lot to think about. The third of which is the mystery house, guaranteed to test even the most visionary of house hunters. Differ. Uh, when we bought the house we're in at the moment, we walked into this house. It was empty. It's a three-story house. And uh, we got to the top floor, looked at each other and nodded. And I said to the sales agent, OK, what do we do now? And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, we'll buy it. He said, what do you mean you'll buy it? You haven't even discussed it. I said, yes, we have. We looked at each other and nodded. That was enough. <laughs> you're both ready. I can tell you're like coiled springs, <laughs> ready to make the move to Devon. My <laughs> husband has his case packed. <laughs> we begin our search in the village of Bratton Clovelly, a rural community not far from the Cornwall border, around an hour away from their son in Plymouth on the south coast. Bratton Clovelly is a pretty village of traditional thatched cob cottages made from a clay, straw and stone mix. Focal points of the village are its Norman church and an authentic Devon inn, dating back to the 18th century. On the fringes of the village is our first property, a period detached cottage full of character features. So welcome to your first property. It's a rather large cottage. You That's look, really nice. Yeah, it looks very nice. Now, originally, when it was built, around 1820, it was three cottages. Yeah, so really? three families lived in here, but to be pleased to know it's just one now. First impression's good? Yes. Very. Yes, definitely. Very good. You said you know pretty instantly, so so far, so good? Oh, very much so. Yeah. It does have that very sort of cottagey country vibe, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does, yes, very yeah. much so. Yeah? Are you keen to get inside? Very, very much, much so. so. Good. Let's go. Mm -hmm. A great first impression, which is all important for John and Lynn, who act on instinct. Let's hope the interior keeps the wow factor going with space enough for their visiting friends and family. So welcome to our first property. As you step through the porch, you come straight into, well, at the moment, the way it's been set up is a dining room. Yeah. But I would call it the first reception room. I like the fireplace. Well, the one thing you wanted was light and airy. Mm -hmm. Cottages normally aren't light and airy, although this one, it's pretty open, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Very much so. I can see you're taking it in. Yes, we are. No, yeah. very much so. <laughs> yeah? It's about the only time I'm quiet is when I'm taking something in. You've got a large study area next door to us here, and then through here, another reception room. This is the second reception room. I like the fact you go down some stairs. I like the room, actually. Yeah? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. This is... Uh... Ideal type living room. Cosy? Mm-hmm. And can you see yourselves in this room? I can. It is very big, considering it was three cottages. Three cottages, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And they've actually blended it into one quite well. Yes. You don't tell. You can't tell it's three. So back up the stairs. We turn through to the kitchen. Mind so you've got a downstairs cloakroom there. And then I would say a real 
Well, I would say a cottagey kitchen, but would you? Yes. Yes, I would. Yes, definitely. Cottagey yes. kitchen. Nice work surfaces over there. Got this area here. Now, what did you used to teach? Home economics. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> You've come alive in here, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. A lovely range over there. Mm. It's good space for a table. That's important. The good news is we can open the patio doors and you can tend to the garden, John. Yes. That's difficult to do when you're cooking. <laughs> do you do the cooking? <laughs> do a lot, you? A lot of it, yeah. How do you feel about you know the, this part of the cottage so far, the downstairs? It's good. It's good. We can live it's here. It's got potential. Yes? Mm. So it's a good start so oh, far. Oh, very much so, yeah. Super. Okay. Right, I'll take you and show you the bedrooms. So the downstairs gets the thumbs up, which is all very encouraging. Hopefully we can continue the feel good factor upstairs as we head for the bedrooms, all served by a traditional family bathroom. Oh, look at this. I like this. Yes, I like that landing. I'm hearing very positive comments, but I'm liking this, I'm liking this landing. I haven't even shown you the master bedroom. What do you oh, think? This, this is oh, that's nice and big, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So how many bedrooms did we want? Three minimum. Four, probably. Don't care if it's got more. Four. Oh, that's all right. Four bedrooms, all actually of a good size. But this and is a family a bathroom. Size, isn't it? All in all, this is a very nice, airy, airy good sized room. And having that extra bedroom, having the fourth, does give you options, doesn't it? If you more wanted catering, to. More people visiting. <laughs> Not disappointed at all. That's a strong first start there. Oh, very much it? so. Yeah. So we're going to head back downstairs. We're going to take a look at the garden, what else is around. And also, I want you to start thinking about price. Uh, so, John, you lead the way. Okay. We'll head outside. Including the footprint of the house, the secluded lawn grounds bordered by trees and woodland total around an acre, including an apple and cherry orchard and its own stream. Will you tell me, I'm not going to say what I think about this garden, but just walking up here, it's all terraced, what do you think? Beautifully cared for, thought out where the planting is, it's stunning, it must look beautiful through the seasons, very nice. You've got that huge glass house there. Now, is that going to be right for your ferns and all your potted plants? Alpines, woodland plants thrive. Alpines in there, woodland plants, any of the shady spots. And you did say you don't mind if it doesn't have a lot of garden, just pots. But now I've showed you this. What can you say? It's a stunning environment. Yeah, you'll feel at home here. Yep. Well, let's see if the price is ideal. Yeah, that's a tricky one. I'm going to go to the top end and say 390, 395, maybe even just over 400. So call it 405. 405. OK, John. Lynn. I'm going to go 385. The current asking price is 399,950. Yeah, I can understand that. So £50 change of your top budget. I can't wait to see the budget. other two now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is only house number one. No, I can't wait to see the other two now. Why don't you go and have a tour of your own in private? Don't forget to check out the orchard. Not often I can say that when I'm showing someone a property. Take your time and I'll find you when you're done. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Coming in £50 short of their top budget at £399,950, this period detached cottage gives them the bright and airy feel they're after, along with four good sized bedrooms a kitchen breakfast room, extensive gardens ideal for John's plant growing, set in an attractive village location and all within reasonable distance to their son in Plymouth. The wow factor for me would be the kitchen. I like the space in there, so breakfast in there would be lovely, but the actual real icing on the cake for me would be the garden. I think it's a beautiful space. When I first saw the property, what I really liked was the cottagey look from the outside and taking the overall impact of the house and the gardens into account, I would say this is a very serious contender for us to buy. Good living room, excellent kitchen, excellent size. Yeah. Dining room is OK. Sounding rather positive, all yes. this feedback. Yeah. I like when I leave you two on your own, talking about our house. We don't tend to be negative people. That's good. Know? And this is only number one. Oh, you know? no. So are you can't ready? Yes. Shall we hit the road? Oh, yes. I'm going to drag wait. you away. Yep. OK. Good. Thank you. <laughs> from local food producers. 
This ethos of growing local is no more evident than at the walled gardens of Maristow. Once a market garden for an 18th century country house, it fell into disrepair. However, the site's fortunes have been turned around, thanks to garden designer and tenant Jenny Turnley Price. And as Lynn and John have a horticultural passion, we sent them to meet Jenny to find out how the local community plays a role in breathing new life into this garden. OK, and what are you planning to do here? Well, I'm aiming to restore the garden back to full productivity, but to use that restoration process as a vehicle for a number of community projects. So we've been working with long-term unemployed young people. Um, that project came to an end last year. We're now working with groups of offenders doing what they used to call community service. We're working with a charity uh, helping people with post-traumatic stress disorder, and we're about to start working with school groups as well can't let you leave without uh, coming to get stuck in with us so if you'd like to follow me I'll take you down and give me a hand doing a bit of weeding. Certainly, well Great. done. Yes, love to. Jenny leases the gardens from the owners, the Maristow Charitable Trust. Once totally overgrown, the gardens are now clear of undergrowth and Jenny hopes to restore many of its old Victorian features including the vine house. OK, what are you actually going to grow in this patch? Um, this patch will... I haven't quite decided, to be honest, but probably herbs. Um, but the general rule of thumb that I'm using is that it's whatever you can't get in the supermarkets. Good idea. So whilst, yes, we're doing potatoes and, yes, we're doing French beans, you know, we're doing purple French beans, yellow ones, borlotti beans, cannellini beans, you know, those, yeah. those sorts of things. So what are you going to do with all these vegetables when you grown them? Uh, well, some of them will sell here in a shop, um, and there's a couple of local pubs who want to take what we've got, but most of it will go through Tamar Grow Local, which is a um, social enterprise that I'm involved with, um, which does a number of things. It, it helps set up community growing projects, but it also acts as a, an honest broker for small producers like me. Tamar Grow Local is a non-profit organisation that supports local food producers like Jenny, with outlets for their produce. Jenny also plans for local students to learn about nutrition and for the produce to supply local schools. But a key element of this project are volunteers involved in helping it to grow into a community hub. So what do you think the volunteers get from this? Uh, um, there's a wide range, age range of volunteers and I think they each get something slightly different. So those who are, say, students at the university tend to be quite involved with green issues and sustainability agendas and so on. And the more mature ones? The more mature ones, I think, it's for them, it's more the social aspect and the feeling of giving something back to the community. That seems to be the thing that they really enjoy most of all. Making a difference in your own backyard seems to be something that really appeals to people. With the seed of inspiration sown into our couple's minds, it's back to our hunt for the perfect property as our house search continues. For house number two, we head south to the village of Chillerton, about a 40-minute drive to their son in Plymouth. Set in a valley to the west of Dartmoor National Park, Chillerton is surrounded by the stunning Devonshire landscape. Although mainly a mix of 19th century stone cottages and more modern residences, there have been dwellings here since the 11th century, with some of its cottages boasting a mention in the Doomsday Book. In the heart of the village is house number two, a converted property full of character built in 1866. So this time, we brought you to the village of Chillerton, West Devon, Tavistock's about six miles away. What do you think? It's different. Strangely, I can't wait to have a look inside it. Ah, do you like the stone, the local yes, stone? Yes, I like the stone. Mm. Well, you were both raring to go with the first property to get inside. How do you feel about this one? The same, raring to go. Do you? Raring yes. to get inside it, yeah. Right. The period charm of house number two has certainly aroused their interest. And as they're looking for a home with a spacious open feel, I'm hoping to cover that base as we walk through the front door. So do come on in. It's a very small kitchen. <laughs> wow. I just said wow. Were you expecting this? No. Not at all. Not in the slightest. That's stunning. Look at that gallery. It's fabulous, isn't it? It's amazing. That's the last thing I expected when we stood outside. And it's fabulous that they've kept it so open with the mezzanine floor looking out over the garden and the fields beyond, which we'll see a little bit later. Flooring's nice as well. Now, the uh, range provides the hot water for this side of the property. 
because this side can be used as a holiday let. Ah, OK. You can lock that door and use one side of the property. This side you can rent out in the high season, six to seven hundred pounds a week. So if you wanted to, and I know you haven't asked for that, but with this property you do have an opportunity. Bonus. Yeah. The open plan living room kitchen area has hit the spot. With a galleried study, it certainly gives them that bright and airy feel they're after. From here, we head to the two downstairs bedrooms and bathrooms. So you've got a large double bedroom there and a shower and toilet. And then in a way, you've got an ensuite here with a freestanding bath, because I like to think of this as the master bedroom. It's on the ground floor, but just check out that view. That's lovely. We're not it, getting excited about it, though, are we? Um, I don't tend to get excited over bedrooms because they're either big enough or they're not. Is it big enough? Yeah. Great. So I've only shown you one half of the house. Let's go back through that huge kitchen dining area. Let me show you the other half and see how it's sort of laid out. And then you can decide which bedroom might be right for you two. Yes. OK. So far, we're getting a mixed reaction to the downstairs. And even though it's designed to have a holiday let option, I hope they can also visualise this as one whole house. So bring you to the, the other side of the house where the family live when they're letting out that side. So you've got a sitting room here, but you've got a second kitchen through there, which they use. Oh. Could make a fantastic utility room, because it's huge, got the original flagstones, and that leads out onto the garden. Above us, you've got a further two bedrooms and a family shower room. So you've got four in total. Yes, we have. My inclination is to keep it as one. Yeah. Having seen that big wow kitchen. You wouldn't want to give that up, would you? No. 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 I'm not convinced the property is totally wearing them, but maybe the garden can add that extra dimension. So with our second property, very different second garden, really. What do you think? This one's a bit like my back garden. <laughs> but what about... I mean, I like this garden. I like the way it's been set out. So you've got the wild area here. Obviously, but... it's been laid to lawn and you've got the raised vegetable patches. But what I particularly like... If you look over the stone wall, you've got cows in the back. A beautiful view. You've got the local church up on the hill. So, we need to get onto money, don't we? Hmm. I'm going to go 390. I'm going to say 415. John is closest. <laughs> it's actually on the market for 425,000 pounds. Feeling it might be. The owner is aware of your budget and is happy to negotiate on a sensible offer. Mm hmm Has that changed your opinion? Because I'm not quite sure there's elements of this property that you love, and then there's other parts that it's not Undecided. quite working, is it? No. I think you two need to have another look around on your own with that price tag in your mind. What do you think? I think you're right. Ah, oh, <laughs> go idea. on then. <laughs> Enjoy. This converted 19th century stone house comes in over budget on the market for £425,000 and gives them four bedrooms, a huge open-plan living room kitchen area, a good-sized garden, an abundance of character set in a pretty village location on the edge of the Dartmoor National Park. I liked the outside of the property, thought it looked interesting. When you walked in the kitchen, that definitely had the wow factor for me. As you go through the property, I think in some degrees it wasn't as exciting as I found the initial kitchen. I think this house is quite deceiving. When I walked in, I was stunned by the kitchen and the general living area and the mezzanine of, of that area. Going through to the rest of the property didn't quite live up to the initial start. I felt that the first property we saw was a chocolate box cottage in a lovely location. This one didn't quite live up to the same high expectations I think we got after seeing the first one. You could live with that view. I could live with that view. You Come two have picked the best spot, haven't yes, you? Yes, we have. We like class. Yeah. It's a classy view. It's fabulous. But that's it for today. Take you back now. You've got a lot to think about, haven't you? You've got to mull over. OK. Come on. Words. He's never speechless. I don't know. We achieved what, it today with the mystery house. I just don't house. know what to say. <laughs>
and I learned the delicate art of shoemaking. So if you've had a bad day... Exactly. <laughs> this is very good. This is therapeutic. It's very therapeutic. Well, I don't know about you, but I thought yesterday went rather well. John and Lynn were particularly taken with our first property, with that enchanting garden. So let's see if we can go one better today. Now, remember, they said we could show them anything as long as it's detached. Well, Mystery House, bring it on. For the mystery, we're heading south for leaving Devon stepping over the border into Cornwall to the village of Harrow Barrow. Set in the glorious Tamar Valley, it's around half an hour from Plymouth. Before we reach the mystery house, I'm taking John and Lynn for a stroll around the village. So, we are nearly at the mystery house, but I wanted to stop off here. We have crossed the border into Cornwall, but I think you two guessed that already, didn't you? Yep. But the reason we chose not just the house, but the village, to show you was because of the community here. Mm. It used to be a mining village, I think, in the 1800s with the boom years, tin and copper. Well, obviously, it's changed over the years, but the locals have put a lot of effort in to keeping that spirit. We've got a post office, a shop, there's a school, garden centre, there's even a community orchard. I think that's the first time I've ever heard of that. So, so far, we're getting a thumbs up, aren't we, for the yes. location yes. of the Mystery House? Two thumbs. Let's see what you think of the property itself. Okay. The Mystery House will stretch their ability to keep an open mind to see through its cosmetic quirkiness. A converted Victorian property, it once was the hub of this community. So you see in the village, now here is your Mystery House. Wow. Look very at nice. that. <laughs> that looks very unusual. It's quirky enough for us as well. <laughs> it's definitely quirky on a scale of 1 to 10. Definitely. We like quirky. <laughs> Do you? Oh, we love quirky. If you love quirky, you are going to love this property. It's like stepping into another world. Really? Is it? it so is. It was a Methodist church originally when it was built around 1842, converted in the 1990s into a home. Unique is the word. So I know it was an open book with us. Very you didn't much mind so. what you saw as long no. as it was detached with stunning views. This is detached with stunning views. I know, excited now. You're smirking. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we start the official tour? Yes, please. please. A great reaction to the Pink Palace, and I can't wait to see their faces when we get inside. The main building was the chapel, and attached on the right was the old Sunday school. Oh. And I have to say, welcome to your mystery house. <laughs> Now, this is different. Wow. Yes, it, it is. Look, it's a scene out of a book. That's where the altar originally was. Obviously, it's been converted into the most amazing house. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> He's never speechless. I don't we know. We achieved what... it today with the I mystery house. I just don't know what to say. It has, <laughs> it has huge possibilities with a very good imagination. I'm just blown away. <laughs> we like him speechless. Yes. We like him speechless. Let me show you the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> An amazing start, and the mystery has left John lost for words. I'm hoping that's a good sign. So I'm going to call this the doll's house kitchen. Hmm. And it definitely is. But great place for little kids. Yeah. Once you get past what they've done with the house and why they've done the house, you can see why it would give you a great space for a kitchen. Yeah. Give you everything you'd want. Through that door, you've also got a utility room and a downstairs toilet. Wow. Yeah. This is a big space. Yeah. The whole downstairs is a big space. You've come back to me now. I'm getting a bit more chat. No, I'm sorry. You were speechless at first, John. Shocked. Shocked, yeah. But shocked in a good way? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Nothing negative there. <laughs> The downstairs is completed by a study and the old Sunday schoolroom, which we'll tackle shortly. But first, we head to the bedrooms, accessed via the raised dining area staircase, leading on to a stunning galleried landing. With the owners having moved out, the house is only partly furnished, really putting their imagination to the test. So as you can see, the upstairs doesn't disappoint either. Nope. No. <laughs> Colourful. Very, yes, very. There's a theme going on through this house. So this would be the master bedroom, although you've got four in total. 
and two bathrooms. So four bedrooms, that's quite a lot. You asked for three. Yeah. You've yes. got the option. And obviously you've got the fantastic view through it the is, window. I was just looking at that. Beautiful view. It's a bit of a decorative project, which is OK. Yeah. Which is Happy with really, is it? I've still got more to show you. Have you really? Let's yes. <laughs> the landing leads us to another gallery staircase at the opposite end of the property, leading us back down to the adjoining Sunday schoolroom. Going through into the Sunday school. So when we looked at the chapel, the building to the right that was attached, this is it. Oh, yes. This is where the right. lessons yes. would have been on the Sunday. It's a big room as well, isn't it? Yeah. But I feel like I'm on a film set. My yeah. brain's a maelstrom at the moment. The thoughts about this one. And How do you put yeah. a price on something like this, then? Unfortunately, that's the question I'm going to be asking you in just a little while. OK? Mm. You can start thinking about that now, can't you? Yes. I've thought of nothing else since we walked through the front door. <laughs> Come out to the Mediterranean <laughs> area. Oh, oh, right. John and Lynn are blown away by the mystery house but it remains to be seen if the work involved is more than just cosmetic. So how is this? Beautiful. Absolutely Beautiful. stunning. You have a sun trap, an absolute sun trap. And look you're going to the... get the sun all afternoon into the evening. Just look at the Tamar Valley. Beautiful. Stunning, actually. This is why we want to move to this part of the world. You don't have, really, a conventional garden, but I can give you a view and somebody else can mow that. Absolutely, but plenty of room for pots and plants. Very true. Perfect? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Well, can you put a price on this property? That's a tough one. How do you value this? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I'm going to put you on the spot. Give me a price, John. Probably 425. I'm going to go for 405. Ooh, sneaky. <laughs> and Lynn is closest. 395. Okay. £395,000. Mm. It's probably worth every penny of it, actually. Yeah. Have we given you something to think about with our mystery? Big time. Do you want to have another look around? Oh, yeah. Yes, we'd love to. Thank you. How long do you need? <laughs> you probably need quite a few hours, don't you? Go and have lunch. <laughs> In all seriousness, go on your own, have a look around, have a really good think, and look at it through, you know, your eyes, what you would do to it if you lived here. Yeah. OK, we will do that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Our quirky mystery Victorian chapel comes in just under budget at £395,000 and gives them four bedrooms, a massive open plan living and dining space, a large kitchen breakfast room, bags of unique character features, a delightful community village location with stunning views of the glorious Tamar Valley. Just look at that view. Would you ever tire of that? No, never. What about the lack of a garden? Because there is none. No, but you get all your pots in and you could grow some bigger plants because of the sun and the heat from the stone. Oh, certainly could. This property wouldn't have been one that we'd have considered at all, but having been bought here, it opened our eyes to other possibilities and all the time we walked around, it just makes you smile. At this moment in time, I'm feeling a, a sense of wonderment of this mystery house. That really started the moment we walked in the door, saw what was the altar at the far end. It just got bigger and, and bolder. The Mystery House, to me, has been absolutely superb. It's been brilliant. So that's the tour of the Mystery House over. You've got some thinking to do, haven't we you? We have, yes. Certainly have. Do you want to go and have a chat and I'll catch up with you in a little while? Yeah, that's a good idea. OK, thank you. See you in a minute. <laughs> So we've shown John and Lynn our three properties, but if you're looking in this beautiful part of the country, there's still plenty of other houses worth taking a look at. For the average budget, how about this Grade 2 listed semi-detached two-bedroom cottage in East Ogwell? Thought to date back several hundred years, this cottage is full of period character and is on the market for £256,950. If your finances can go a little further, then this four-bedroom barn conversion in East Allington might fit the bill. With vaulted ceilings, feature beams and an open-plan kitchen dining area, it's on sale for £350,000. And should you hanker after single-level living, then this three-bedroom 1930s bungalow in the village of Hunsdon is a lovely example. Complete with its own pond and stunning views of the Dartmoor National Park, 
It has a price tag of £539,950. Industries. Designers, jewellery makers, wood and metal workers have formed strong creative communities in the county. Today, I've come to Morton Hampstead to meet Alison Hasty, who for over 30 years has used traditional methods to make leather footwear and fashion items. I must admit, handmade shoes, quite unusual, quite unique. Indeed, yes. So I think there's only about four or five different companies in the country that make handmade shoes like this. Is that all? Yes, yes. So, Alison, is it possible to see the whole process, how you make a pair of boots from start to finish? Absolutely, Nikki. You're going to help us and we're going to make you a pair. For me? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. It takes between four to six hours to make a pair of shoes, so we'd better get cracking. So now you've got to choose what colour you want. I'm a woman, that's going to be difficult. Some factory-made shoes are comprised of hundreds of small pieces, but I only need five per shoe. Using a clicking knife, I score around the pattern, starting with the vamp at the front of the shoe. Once I have the ten leather sections, those are glued onto a sheet of pigskin lining and cut out. Right, now we're starting to stitch the shoe together. This is the back strap and the two quarters for the side of the shoe. Yes. Um, and we're going to use this fearsome machine. Shoemaking techniques have changed little since the Industrial Revolution, with one person making a pair from start to finish. Because years ago, Devon was renowned, wasn't it, for its leather and for its shoemaking, but that's all changed in recent years, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's both linked to the farming. You'd have a lot of leather, um, and there, are, there is one amazing uh, tannery left in Colleton. But yes, every town of any size would have had a tannery and many shoemakers. Now to stick the uppers to the insole and sew them into place. The soles are cut from a sheet and attached with a rubber solution glue. So it goes one on top of the other. And this is a really technical bit. So if you've had a bad day... <laughs> exactly. This is very good. This is therapeutic. It's very therapeutic. The sole is then trimmed and we're almost there. I'm thrilled. My first pair of handmade shoes and may they serve me for, well, many, many miles in comfort. I think they're going to make all the difference. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. It's amazing to see a centuries-old craft in action and I hope Alison continues to preserve this skill for years to come. I'm delighted with my new footwear, but it's time to hit the road and see if our couple have come to a decision. Well, that's it for our house search with John and Lynn. And I think we have two possible contenders. The cottage, which they were very taken with, and then, of course, our mystery house, the chapel. So I'm really excited to hear what they've got to say. Well, John and Lynn, you gave us quite quite an open brief. Did we surprise you? Uh, yeah, especially with the house number three. Well, let's start with house number three. Impactful, I think, is the term for the chapel. But did we get close? Because we walked around, got some fantastic responses from you, but I wasn't sure at the end whether it's a contender or not. So you tell me. Very much a contender. I don't think I've ever been in anything as remotely quirky as that in my life. The downstairs was certainly unique. The pink kitchen was a bit different. The... I thought that caught your eye, John. Oh, it did. <laughs> the lack of a garden was compensated for by the Mediterranean sun terrace, which just so multi-purpose. And when you've got the whole of the Tamar Valley to look at, who needs a big garden? So a big thumbs up for the Mystery House, which is fabulous news. Second property, we discounted that one? Yep. OK. But I have to ask you about the cottage, because we started off very well, and then the garden 
Well, I think we were all enchanted by that garden, weren't we? One thing we loved about that garden is the tiered effect the garden was put in. And no matter which aspect of the garden you looked at, there was always something more interesting to see in the other corner. And inside, for me, I found that the house itself was surprisingly large inside, uh, with the dual aspect windows brought a lot of light into each room. Upstairs, I thought, was good, but the kitchen, for me, uh, like a kitchen dining room, was very, very nice. So where do we go next? We're probably going to have another look at the first one again. We'll probably have a look at the Pink Palace again. So we've got two to play with, two second viewings on both. I wonder which one you might go with. We'll let you know. Please do. Thank you both so much. No, thank, thank you. you. I've really enjoyed showing John and Lynn our three properties, especially as their brief was to find them homes they wouldn't have dreamt of looking at themselves. The good news is they're considering two out of the three. And on a day like today, well, life doesn't get much better than this. See you next time. John and Lynn have since been back for a second viewing on house number one and the mystery house. They like both properties, but are waiting until their house is sold before they proceed any further. If you'd like to escape to the...